and welcome to Daddy, Dad and Me. For those who are new to the channel, thank you very much for joining us and for those that are subscribed and are coming back for more or sticking around, thank you too. Um, as you'll see from the title below of the video, I wanted this to be a very short and informative video just about various parts or aspects of either the assessment process or going through the adoption process um, about things that you may not necessarily be aware of and they usually come with questions attached to them. So these are just some really quick um, informative points that I want to draw to your attention and some may surprise you. Let's go. First off, so anybody that looks after little one, most local authorities will require um, those people to have DPS checks, um, depending on the local authority. Some are stricter than others. Um, with us, our local authority that um, is involved with us, a little man, they are very happy for kind of direct family, so grandparents, aunties, etc. as long as we give names, addresses, dates of birth, and when he is with them. That's absolutely fine, but if it was anybody else, um, then we would need to have a DBS check. So be mindful of that. But again, side note that a lot of local authorities will deal with it differently. So you may find that they don't want a DBS check um, and they may be quite happy just as uh, an agreement up until the time of the adoption order. Next one. This one really surprised me and it only came from our information event. So this is going back more than two years ago. And it was a couple in front of us there, so they were sat in front of us and they didn't realise either, so I will feel like I'm a, I should be obliged to, to share with you. They are a, well, were a couple going through or starting the adoption process and they were not aware and it was only when the social worker informed them that they lived together in a one house with their entire family. If that is your scenario, everybody in your in the household, because the child would be living there amongst you, everybody has to be assessed. And that was a real kind of shock for me. And it was a shock um, for the, the gentleman and lady in front of us that it was. So, yeah, I didn't realise and I have had that confirmed by by somebody that sits on sits on a panel. Um, um, so yeah, just be mindful of that, that if you live in, in amongst people within one household, then all of you will have to go through the assessment process. Next one. Very quick and snappy on this one. You can legally apply after 10 weeks post placement. So you'll have your placement day. Um, um, a lot of people, uh, I know neighbours of ours, they believed as soon as Little Man was with, with us, that was it. He, we, had, we had legally adopted him. So I informed them and they were quite shocked too. So yeah, on the 10th week on the day, you can submit you the papers to the courts. Um, no sooner before, but obviously afterwards you can. Some couples or adopt, single adopters um, and adoptive parents may choose to wait longer than that. I know some people that have left it a year or so, if not more, because they feel dependent on the age of the child, that it should be the child's decision. And I think that's quite sweet, a sweet way to, to look at it. Um, but so yeah, so you do have to wait 10 weeks. Up until the time that an adoption order is granted, you share some legal and parental responsibility with the local authority. And a lot of that comes from, say for instance, emer emergency medical treatment was required, you would need to inform the local authority. And so in our case, uh, the social worker for Little Man, that he needed an operation of sorts um, or a procedure so you have to let them know and they then have to seek approval if it was in the case that it was an emergency emergency so it had to be done there and then it would be the decision of the doctor and then obviously you would need to make contact with out of hours social workers etc to let them know so yeah just be mindful of that so you do share and that's up until the point that the adoption order is granted and obviously once that happens everybody goes away and then you have full legal responsibility but up until that time it is shared with the local authority so you do have to be mindful and that may differ from local authority as to to the extent and what you need to tell them and what information they require from you and what you need to share back with them 
Next one. Sometimes quite an interesting point is that in most adoptions, some form of indirect contact is maintained with the birth family, and that can be birth parents, grandparents, siblings, um, or could be someone significant there. I have heard, and again, this is just my um, own experience, not uh, experience with little man's birth parents, but in the point that if it was, for, for instance, two years and there was no contact back, then you could choose um, to, to stop that contact. But again, that's only just what I've heard. But it is, uh, indirect contact can differ. Sometimes there can even be instances where there is direct contact. But again, that could just be any siblings born after, um, or it could be grandparents, just dependent on the, the reasons for that. So yeah, just be mindful that there will, there will be indirect contact and in some instances you may meet the birth parents prior to the adoption taking place and um, what I would say is that the birth family have to be in a a good place um, they don't shouldn't be posing any risk to you as adopters and that meeting is there for you to to share information to a point and for you to really ask any questions from the birth birth parents could be where does uh, where does their personality come from? Is there a particular name, uh, reason why you chose the name? Um, and it's just so you can share that moment with your little one or little ones later in life. Next one. Total cost of adoption. So for any viewers outside of the UK, obviously that will differ. I know in America there is some quite hefty costs to pay for adoption, but the cost of adoption in the UK, I would say it's less than £150. And that all, only that comes from the cost of the medical that you are required to have within stage one. Um, I think as was, I think it's about £100, £110. What I would say is, is that obviously there are costs on top of that so for introductions when you're traveling um, accommodation costs food costs we were able to um, be reimbursed that money but i do know that i'd probably say a large percentage don't have that that funding given to them i don't know why but obviously lo local authorities differ um but yeah we just I, somehow i look at us that we were lucky that we had a local authority that would would pay for all of that so We've not been financially out of pocket for any travel, um, food, etc., other than the, the medical. So, yeah, obviously, the, I think sometimes that puts people off um, and that it will cost thousands. But in our case, that wasn't. Next one. Finally, up until the, the time that the adoption order is, um, is given, so obviously once the judge and the legal system has has been exhausted and that has they've given the adoption order and that's in place um, up until that time there are met various different meetings and again i think like i referred to earlier um, some people kind of think once the, the, your child is placed with you that's it everyone everyone goes away but it can be you can have months and months of meetings there can be lack reviews there could be pep meetings um, which is like educational plan meetings lack review is a local authority care uh, look, sorry looked after child sorry there's lots of different terminologies looked after child meetings so that's someone independently um, an independent reviewing officer looking at everything as a whole um, and so yeah it can be a very very busy time and you just uh, I say thanks to COVID, we've been able to kind of factor in that time very well. So uh, yeah, just be mindful that once little ones are with you, that isn't necessarily it. you. There's going to be meetings that they are required to have with you um, up until the time that the adoption order is given. I hope you found it all informative. They're very quick and snappy um, points. And yeah, I hope they've just given you some kind of further information and just points that you may not necessarily consider, you may not be aware of straight away. Um, any questions at all, please do get in contact with us, daddydadandme at gmail.com. Check out the blog, daddydadandme.com and our Instagram and Twitter pages. Thank you so much for viewing. Do hit the notification bell down below. Please do subscribe um, if you would like to and you'd like to see more videos it does mean a lot to us um, and yeah thank you for sticking around and watching to the end lots of love and there'll be some more videos very soon bye